Let's take a look at the next generation after the Apex, which was the first generation to have emissions equipment on it. And that was the ISX CM870. First, we're going to take a look at what would be the driver's side of the engine. I made the numerals a little smaller on this because there's a couple pieces I didn't want to completely cover up. So we're going to start with uh, this engine has, due to emissions changes, it has an EGR cooler, EGR valve, EGR piping or plumbing, an EGR differential pressure sensor, and a turbo wastegate control valve. And it also has an exhaust gas pressure sensor, which is has become a very important sensor on the engine when it comes to controls, controlling the uh, turbocharger, the, basically the air system. So first we're going to start with number one, which is the engine's ECM. The early Apex had an ECM that had three big ports on it, three 50-pin ports. This ECM has two ports, a 50-pin and a 60-pin. And then it has a four pin. The four pin is nothing but power and ground to the ECM. There are two power inputs and two ground inputs. Many times only one was used inside the ECM. They're ganged together. So as long as you add sufficient wire current carrying capability, you could just use one power and one ground going to the uh, square plug. And that was on the front top left of the ECM. Number two, towards the back of the engine, halfway down, is the EGR differential pressure sensor. It has two small, what look like brake lines, that hook from the mounting pad it's mounted to, to the EGR pipe. And it has a, uh, inside the pipe, there's a block of steel welded with a hole in it. So when the air flows over it, it causes a bit of a vacuum. And that's how they measure the flow of the EGR going into the intake. Number three is the EGR piping that comes around from the other side of the engine from the EGR cooler. Number four is the EGR Venturi. You have to remember that uh, the EGR system is going into a system that already has pressure, the boost system. So they have a Venturi in there, sort of like blowing over a, the top of a straw, will pull liquid up the straw same idea. Number five down at the bottom front is an electronic air control valve for the turbocharger wastegate. And that's the changes on this side of the engine. Now we're on the exhaust side. We'll start with number one. This was an early VGT turbo. Inside the turbo itself in the exhaust housing, the vanes are basically the same as they are in the newer engines. It, they've refined it a little bit, but it's the basic same mechanical turbo. Uh, they move the levers around for the electronic VGTs, but this has an air solenoid on it, uh, number one, and that is controlled by that uh, air valve on the other side of the engine. The ECM tells it how much air it wants to send over here, and it can move that lever. Uh, the lever on the turbo moves about I think the minimum travel is 365 thousandths or 362 thousandths when you're doing a go-no-go -go check to see if the turbo is bad mechanically inside. Uh, this did not have precise controls. The reason you have a VGT on a turbo is so that you can increase exhaust gas pressure so that you can move EGR uh, and it causes response. Uh, quick response for the turbocharger. You can have a lot of boost coming off of a traffic light where you couldn't before. So those are the two reasons for VGT. Number one, you need exhaust gas pressure to push that exhaust gas into the boost. And then number two, you want to be able to spool that turbo up fast. Number three is the EGR valve just behind the alternator there. Uh, this was called a hot side EGR. On the next generation, they moved it to the other side of the EGR cooler, so it got cooler gas. The hot side EGRs 
they did okay if it, everything was right on the engine. If you got a boost leak, a hole in a charge air cooler, something like that, you would cook that valve. Uh, the gears, there's mechanical gears in it above that motor. Number three is the electric motor. Then there was gears in the actual valve bolted right to the front of that corrugated piping you see on the nose of the EGR cooler. Those gears were sintered uh, iron and they would get so hot they would swell and bind. So that was a problem. Number four, now for the first time, we're, we need to know what the temperature of the air is coming in the front of the turbo because we have to control the uh, air temperature in the intake manifold because we're putting a lot of heat into it. So now there's a, a lot of more math that goes into the game here. And then number five is the uh, almighty exhaust gas pressure sensor. And in other videos, I'll go into more detail about that. Uh, but this was the first time that that sensor showed up. And it measures the exhaust gas pressure in the exhaust manifold so that the ECM knows what to do with the VGT lever on a turbo. So that EGR flows when it should and doesn't flow when it shouldn't. This was a very good engine. Uh, they came up, up to 565 horsepower. And I don't think they made any 600, just 565 horse. If there was a 600, I never saw one. Uh, so this was the ISX CM870.